Aloha and welcome to the Dragonfly Ranch. I just heard a gecko say, I think uh, he's welcoming you, you too. This, uh, we are very blessed to have Phoenix Williams here at the Dragonfly Ranch and he's going to be teaching us today how to do a sauerkraut preparation. So take it, Phoenix. All right. So sauerkraut, what is sauerkraut? Fermented cabbage, essentially. And that's what we got here, cabbage. And I've taken, uh, this is about two pounds a head. So uh, we'll do a quick cut here of what I'm doing. Cut it in half, cut it in quarters, cut out the hard middle. Cut that in half. You can chop the cabbage by hand, but today we're going to use the Cuisinart with the shredder blade. Makes quick work of it. Let's do it. Always sing while making your cabbage. Sing while making your cabbage. Sing. Anyway. So this mushroom walks into a bar and the bartender says, hey, get out of here. We don't like your kind around here. And the mushroom says, hey, what's wrong? I'm a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it, Chelsea? Well, uh, Phoenix, I came back over to remind you that maybe you want to tell people about this thing that you I will ordered. tell them about it when I get there. One step at a time. Okay. <laughs> Most of this will be edited out okay. about the cabbage cutting and all that. This is where we put in the music. My music! Ah. Scary machines. <laughs> Chelsea, don't go to sleep. <laughs> As you see, this makes quick work of it. If you have to do this by hand, you're going to be unhappy. Maybe not. Maybe you like knives. And chopping. Cabbage done. Uh, let's see, we'll put a little garlic in here. Make it a little spicy. But not too spicy. Six cloves of garlic, approximately. Unfortunately, Barbara, I think I'm going to have to use the bigger bowl. This one right here. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to put a little celery in there. Uh, you can put all kinds of stuff in there, uh, daikon radish, uh, any kind of radish, uh, celery, ginger, it makes it a little spicy. What else, Barbara? I'm really fond of the ginger. There's someone from uh, 
Croatia to get in, in Croatia, her grandmother used the ginger, and we've been doing that ever since. And that's what makes ours so special, I think, is the ginger. Check out. Get it ready for you if you want. If you want. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't have that much ginger, but... Yeah, we could use like twice as much as this. The... We've done it with a lot of ginger in it and loved it. Not everybody loves ginger the way we do. Are you going to put this through the uh, machine? Um, I wasn't. You can grate it. Grate it. Okay. In the meanwhile, I'm going to talk to the people about salt. Okay. Real salt. You want to make sure you don't have any chemical salt. You want to have good salt. This is real salt, million-year-old sea salt. They say it's good. I believe them. Redmond, Utah. It's and a it's a... Uh, it's a teaspoon per two pounds of cabbage. A tablespoon, excuse me, a tablespoon for two pounds of cabbage. And I, I, had, I had three heads of cabbage and they were about two pounds each, so I'm gonna put three tablespoons in this batch. And the salt makes uh, water come out of the vegetables. And also provides a suitable environment for the bacteria, lactobacilli bacteria, which grows on the cabbage naturally, cabbage, to ferment. I didn't know all that. Go research this thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, let's see, should we run that through the, uh, yeah. through the machine? Yeah, I guess it'd be easiest. Let me, let me cut off the... Anyway, uh, we don't really have enough, it isn't enough ginger, but, it a flavor. but uh, some part of it will be flavored with ginger. Okay. So we put garlic and ginger in there, but you could put other things, cayenne, if you want a spicy. And uh, okay, let's move all this out of side. People find it hard to believe that, that there's no vinegar, there's no water, it's all just cabbage and salt. And the, the cabbage makes its own water, and uh, there's nothing extra that makes, makes it liquid like that. But you're going to explain what this is. This came from Germany, and Phoenix found it on the internet. These are the little weight things that go inside of it. And this is what it looks like. What happens is it's got this little moat here. What's the name of this, Phoenix? Do you remember? What's that? What's the name of this? How do you pronounce that? Uh, Gartoff. G-A-R-T-O-P-F. And uh, it's on the internet. This is what they use in Germany. Um, and what's really nice is that it's got this this mold. And one time I made this wonderful sauerkraut, I thought, and I forgot to put the water in it. And it got all bad. But by having the water in it, and then the air comes out, when it kind of releases its gas, it comes out through this little hole and goes bloop bloop. Yeah, the, the, the water prevents any bacteria from getting in, and the air and then lets all the gases from the thing come out. So anyway. Um, next, uh, we have to massage the cat, the, uh, the cabbage, or pound it. Woo! Wow! <laughs> we might want to put something... Uh, we never use metal. That's one of the important things to remember. Underneath that. So that I don't. I don't think it's a good it. idea to pound it. Anyway, you can massage the cat. You can massage it. Basically, you want to work the salt in, and the salt makes the water come out. 
So you can pound it with, you know, some other, you know, method or squeeze it and uh, work the saw in. Some people like the cutting, the slicing of the, uh, the cabbage. You know, they want to be connected to it and they also, it makes it bigger. These are pretty small pieces of cabbage. So um, some, that's the, an alternative method is to not use the machine to, but it's so quick to use the machine that it's uh, tempting. And, uh, but it's nice too to have the two different cabbages, the red and the, and the white, because then it uh, makes it more interesting looking. Turns it kind of red. So as I'm massaging this, I can feel the water coming out. And that's how he keeps his nice mu muscles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I massage cabbage. <laughs> lummy, lummy. Yes, it's a, a lummy lummy technique. Lummy lummy does mean uh, it's the cat. Okay, cat. truth be told. Yeah. It's really quite difficult to get enough water out of the cabbage in a short time. Because basically, what happens when you put the put the put the, the cabbage in here, you, and then you put these stones on top of the cabbage, you want to make sure the cabbage is underwater. So you can massage it for as long as you need to, or you can just make a little brine and pour it on top. You That's what I use. Water, salty water. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and layer this in here. And, uh, you know, another thing I've done sometimes, Phoenix, is I've cheated by taking some of these nice uh, ready-made things like uh, at the store and put a little bit of the culture in there. Like this is already fermented mm -hmm. sauerkraut that's horseradish leek. And so I, I sometimes take the liquid, either from our last batch of sauerkraut or like this one. There's a little bit of juice okay, down there. Okay, that's a good idea, Barbara. We're cheating. We're cheating. But it's, um, should I put well, it Don't put here? it in now. Mm -hmm. I, but I'm still going to have to make some brine, most likely, because... It's not wet enough? It's not going to be wet enough. But um, the, the key is not to put too much salt. It's not too little and not too much. So well, The way that I do it, if you don't know exactly how much it weighs or whatever, is I put a little bit in there, and then I salt it like I was going to eat it like how much I would put salt on it to eat. And uh, then I put another layer, and I salt that layer like I'm going to eat it. No more, no less. And then that always ends up being not too salty, and salty enough. Okay. And this looks like we're, we, we did a pretty good job of almost filling that out. Now it I could, I could, uh, I could get a little more water out of it, that, you know, and pound it with something. If you have a really strong uh, potato masher, yeah. you can use that. Um, but you never want to use the one with metal. For no some, metal. Yeah, for, what, this what one's not reason? strong enough. Why is that that they say no metal on, on these things? What, you know the reason? Uh, I don't know. I think it has to do with the uh, interaction of the metal with the. Uh, it did it. For some reason, we're not supposed to do it. Cooking pretty good. But anyway, I'm basically lazy. And I'm going to put some water brine in there. I'll just put the whole thing. Okay. It's just a little bit. Yeah, because then it'll give it a little uh, leak. Um, and um, what was it? Horseradish. Oh, the horseradish is a really nice flavor. So I'm going to press this in here nice and tight. That looks like there's enough liquid. It's getting there. Yeah. Uh, just a, it only take a little bit of liquid to make sure it's completely underwater. Yeah. So I flatten it all out. And that was that was three heads of cabbage. We and it just, even, we it just, even uh, get another head it or just, two uh, it just, it's not even halfway full. Yeah, we could probably use another so, two heads. Yeah, you if could. If we wanted to make it be totally full. 
I feel a lot more juice coming out of this right now, so. But I'm still gonna make a little bit of brine. It looks good. I'll take that. Okay. Okay, uh, maybe, uh, I'm just going to mix a little salt and some water and get this all cleaned up for when we put the water in. Maybe a teaspoon, a tablespoon. Do not want to forget the water because that was the, the, the fatal error I did the last time. I did this wonderful. When you go to all this trouble to make this, you don't want to mess up and forget the water. Now, what if somebody doesn't have one of these? What do they do? Uh, you can do it inside of mason jars. Um, you run the risk of um, getting contamination um, from, from the air. And they, they make little uh, special lids for mason jars with, uh, with, a, with a, a gas uh, canister so that it releases the gas. Well, I don't know what they call it, but you can, you can usually find them at hardware stores. This uh, is from Germany. And this size, which I think is uh, 10 liter, is, will cost you about $120. So it's well worth it. So I dissolved the salt in the, in the water and, and I just... Oh, that's plenty. Yeah, I just that poured enough. We so, wanted to cover it, but no more. So now it's like, you know, basically you can see the water coming over the top edge. And then I'm going to put these stones, which I've sterilized and washed in there and that's pretty much it and all I got to do is put this top on there get some water and fill the moat and then depending on where you live and the temperature in the, uh, of the surrounding air will determine how fast it ferments here in Hawaii it can be as little as a week. Yeah, traditional sauerkraut can take six weeks or longer, and you know, and it basically it was it was a way to preserve cabbage for the, throughout the winter. So you got your fall harvest, fermented the cabbage, and then you had cabbage for all the winter, and uh, it could it can ferment for for as long as you know all for three months in in a cold environment. But we're really warm here, so after about a week or ten days, it's going to be ready. And we'll take it out of here, put it in the jars, put it in the refrigerator, and enjoy it. Well, there you go, girls. You just learned how to make sauerkraut. So I'm going to put a date on this uh, with a piece of tape and just set it over to the side, and we'll just let it sit there. And you'll hear it bubble from time to time. You'll be in here doing stuff, and then it'll just go bloop, bloop, yeah, releasing the gas. It's happening like the day. And you don't open it. Just, just, you don't need to open it. Just leave it alone for, for, yeah. for a good 10 days at least. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Phoenix, for teaching us how to make sauerkraut and for sharing it with our public, which we uh, hope they uh, will understand that this is one of the very best things that we can eat because it's fermented. And fermented food is one of the uh, things that people who live a long time, like in Korea, uh, all eat fermented kimchi. Fermented food is one of the things that helps us uh, have good, good digestion. Gut. Yeah, because yeah, basically that's what digests your food. It's the good bacteria. And all traditional cultures around the planet all have fermented foods. Look it up. Check it out. I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we hope that you'll come to our 10-day uh, clean burn shape um, cleanse that is uh, part of the Orinda program. And we'll, we'll be doing that in uh, June of this year. This is next month. So we hope that people will come. They won't even have to think about what they're going to eat because we'll be teaching them. We'll teach them how to do this and other things. So thank you for watching our video. Bye. And we'll see you at the Dragonfly Ranch. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Phoenix. <laughs>